Hey there YouTube, PD Two Finger. This is my airbrush rig video, and I'm a very inexperienced, just getting started airbrush person, uh, so I really don't have any right to make this video. I just wanted to share because, because, because I had purchased a nebulizer pump for two bucks. And this is like a medical pump, and it's in between like a silent fish style pump you use for your fish tank or one of the real loud 12 volt style mini compressors you use plug in your cigarette lighter on your automobile to fill up your car tires or your bicycle tire you know what I'm talking about it's a little air compressor and brrr, they're really loud like you couldn't really run that in your apartment without kind of bothering your neighbors well this nebulizer pump is for medical stuff and it's quieter so I was in a position and the gears were turning and I was thinking about purchasing an airbrush and could I use that nebulizer pump you know I try I tend to really really do things cheaply uh, that's just how I roll and I'm disabled and I haven't been able to work for many years so I kind of have to so think about that when you're giving me the thumbs down and calling me a moron and saying that it doesn't work because that was what I did I typed in airbrush and nebulizer pump and I found time after example where in the forums people had come in and asked that question and the pros, techs, and experts who had never tried it you know the guys with the $500 airbrushes and the $2,000 pumps that they put stickers all over them and the big beards those guys they go no you can't use it it won't work well here's the guitar that I painted that I did the whole airbrush everything on that project that was airbrush used a nebulizer pump and a nebulizer pump alone uh, that guitar was painted in 2013-2014 and as it is today it stands every bit as wonderful and paint shop is held up but it's got a nice uh, clear coat on it as well so uh, that's the first point that I wanted to state is you don't really necessarily need uh, something fancy to get going and even as far as the airbrush goes uh, for learning there you certainly can't be uh, a single action airbrush kit if you're pay if you're paying less than five dollars for it because if you look on eBay some of the dual action Chinese stuff really isn't bad for not much more money which is another reason I wanted to make this video Ultimately, the project was to replicate George Harrison's Stratocaster, which he custom painted in the late 60s and lovingly named Rocky. So I'm going to make this Rocky Strat for my daughter, who's a huge Beatles fan and a budding young guitarist playing music in our family band. So I figured, well, I can use the nebulizer pump and I go ahead and run down to the local cheap tool store and pick up a single action airbrush. I went to Walmart and got all the colors of acrylic poster paint, which that poster paint is very thick. It's almost like thicker than nail mayonnaise. It's it's very thick stuff. So, uh, you my in my cheapness, I would think well you would thin it down with water because it's water-based paint. Well, not necessarily. There's something called airbrush medium, and this is another point I wanted to stress in the video. I ran across a large bottle of airbrush medium that the lid was cracked and they were selling it at a Salvation Army for next to nothing. And it had like masking tape, they had like taped up, like somebody had dropped it maybe. This stuff looks like milk, it's kind of milky. Doesn't really have a strong chemical smell. Well I, I did a Pepsi challenge or a comparison where I did a competition between the performance of the airbrush medium putting that up against a plain old tap water I did this yesterday in my single action airbrush rig with the nebulizer pump and an air tank and every time two times that I used tap water the nozzle clogged after minimal usage and I, I don't know what was going on with that so if anyone has any experience where uh, they've worked with a single action airbrush or a dual action airbrush they used acrylic paint and thinned it down with water please let me know in the comments below because my approach here is I'm never going to put any water in my acrylic paint especially considering I did that before and poured water actually into the main master bottle or poured my leftovers back into it 
out of all that paint that I bought for that project, I had to throw away every single bottle that I added water to because the water has bacteria in it that turns into mold that funkifies that paint and makes it smell horrible. And I mean, I'm not talking about like, ooh, it's a little bit unpleasant aroma because when you paint, the airbrush paint doesn't smell very pleasant. It's not a very good aroma. It's not intolerable or a chemical smell like spray paint is really bad. This moldy rotten paint was worse than rotten eggs. It was like a bad mold, poopy mold smell that was intolerable. I had to throw all of it away. Uh, so we need to definitely, uh, I am saying for my, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I've never had any, <laughs> one thing that my thought process through all of this was like, well, I need to figure out something for the nebulizer because I don't want to be constantly reaching over and having to hit the switch on the side of the air pump to turn it on and off. So I made a foot switch. I had a little triangle foot switch box, like from a sewing machine, and I put a stop switch from like a guitar pedal. Well, this one didn't click on and click off. It was more like a doorbell or a momentary contact foot switch. And I took a AC extension cord and cut one of the lines and hooked that up to that foot switch. So when you would press to press the foot switch, the AC would make contact and light up the uh, extension. Plug the nebulizer into that extension and then leave it on. So basically I would have the single action airbrush loaded up with paint, cut with the airbrush medium. I would depress the valve and then step on the foot switch. The pump would come on, the paint would come out, and I would hold it a little bit off my subject and then move it onto the subject and paint. I would have a, a normal black uh, eighth inch airline that runs on the uh, airbrush connected to a larger clear vinyl tubing that was about five feet going down to the nebulizer pump where I could just stick those pipes together, plop, put them together and they sealed up well enough to do the light duty work that I was doing. Now let me also make this clear. I'm sure I, I may have brought this up in the video. I, preparing myself for war here and all the negative comments and thumbs down come in. I know, I realize that this is like the wrong way and that, you know, you should just save $400 and get a Iwata or Iwana or whatever the expensive airbrush is, a $2,000 pump and put uh, Macintosh stickers on it and be ironic. But uh, that's really not me. That's not what I do. I, like, I never would have thought I had, would have an airbrush and a bunch of paint here, but I do. And yesterday I set it all up. I got a, a music stand and put a big piece of cardboard on there and some thick paint that I had pulled out of some dumpster. <laughs> and I sat there and did some airbrush. I did, did a few of them and edited those a little bit with the camera bag software. And that was a real fine way to spend an evening. And, and also, experiment with my two airbrushes that I have here now. I have a second one that was gifted to me. It's like the Badger single airbrush style. Oh, it's not Badger. This came in an orange old kit. Looked like it was from the 70s and it had a bottle of propellant which was unused. Although there was three tips and I only had one of them. I had the fine tip that's on there. And I could not get that airbrush to function. Even with much higher pressure. Um, so like I said, I, I couldn't get it to work and I was thinking, well, if I had an air tank with more pressure, so I was considering, I mean, if I had a little bit more of that vinyl tubing, I would have just used a two liter bottle and drilled the cap out and the end out and then hot glued the, uh, the vinyl tubing in there and used a two liter, an empty two liter bottle as just a small tank to hold just a little bit of pressure from this system of using the nebulizer pump. So I ended up going with PVC. I made a three inch tank. It was it's about 350 or 250. 350 for a three inch piece. It was five feet long and I reduced that to three. So it's three feet by three inch in diameter piece of PVC. And then each end cap was $1.20. And then the fittings. Uh, and then I had to get the, of course, the primer and the PVC glue. But that air tank, there's a video, I know people are going to be thumbs down and be saying, you're going to kill somebody, those have PVCs down there, it's an air pressure on. Well, I'm running 
there's no hose clamps on the fittings, okay? <laughs> if it gets to be too much pressure, the hose is just going to go and pop off of the nebulizer, you know? It's, it's not even going to be 30, 40 pounds of pressure inside the PVC. And there is a video on YouTube of a 2-inch PVC pipe pressurized to 140 pounds and they drop a 10 pound ingot weight on the side of the pressurized piece of PVC from 14 feet in the air and it doesn't rupture. So I'm not really going to worry about my air tank. Ideally I would put a pressure gauge in it but do I even need that? I mean if you saw how I'm running it right now I've got a little sliding black foot switch that's it's, a, it's actually a dimmer so I can adjust the speed of the nebulizer pump. An airline going to the PVC tank, the PVC tank out going to the airbrush. And I worked with that the other night. I did those uh, eight and a half by 11s or whatever they are, and it worked fantastic. The only thing is the performance of the uh, single action isn't that great. And ideally, if you are if you are going to order single action stuff, get extra bottles so you can have a bunch of different colors of paint lined up and just switch those out. You know, and then clear the tube and then paint with it. And you know, then you could have the more colors you have loaded up, the less time in between you're able to actually apply paint to your easel, to your subject. So that would be important. I had three bottles going. It was it was good. So I would say that single action thing for 10 bucks, you know, it's, it's a good deal. But not really considering they had other cheap airbrushes that people had reviewed that were like 12 or 13 Chinese, you know, like dual action airbrushes that people were saying they were pretty good. Now, I had read in some forums and different places of people's recommendations and I ended up, this one guy was recommending the Royal Max 138. It was 19 bucks. It's a 0.3 millimeter dual action, which with that one with the trigger on the dual action, that's basically the single action as a toy. And they just don't work very well. You can't get a very fine work with it. The dual action is where when you depress the trigger, it's on the top in this case, the more you depress it, the more airflow comes out. And when you pull back, that's when the paint comes out. And depending on how far you pull back, back opens up the valve more. It's a long needle that comes to a fine point and then the, 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 the tip matches that needle and pulls out. So it's all in how well that tip and that needle make. So if they were manufactured properly, I read if you get a real shiny or polished needle, they really work well. So it might be in your interest if you're buying a cheap kit to make sure that you can also purchase additional needles. So if the one you get is mismanufactured, you know, you can try polishing it when you make the order get an additional needle and tip. Basically the points of this video are the nebulizer, the smaller pump, did work. Even though in the forums they said it didn't. Uh, that foot switch idea, that helped me and it didn't really cost me much because I had all that stuff here. Uh, so that was a good use of my time. Uh, the airbrush medium definitely worked really well for me. I couldn't get the water to work at all. So looking forward, how do I make my own airbrush medium? Like I said, I did read 60% distilled water, 30%, 90% alcohol, and then two additional ingredients, acrylic extract accelerator and acrylic uh, flow enhancer. Some, something like that. I gotta look that one up. Don't quote me on that. And then the air tank. Is that necessary? Well, you know, that's up to you. In my case, I am dealing with this nebulizer pump that's kind of really not the best. So having the air tank is going to enable me to get more pressure out of that uh, because it does. It works. You can fill that tank up for a while and then shut the pump off and then run the airbrush for a long time. It was longer than I thought. That air tank held a lot more than I thought. And then my last point that I'll bring up is that there always will be a lot of hate for eBay Chinese products. If, if you were going to get into airbrush and you were on a budget, let's say you're a kid and you want to do it, go ahead and try to, you know, get, if you can afford 20, get the Royal Max 130. That's supposed to be really good and it's got a brand name on it. 
Or you could save yourself five, six bucks and get one of the $12 ones and cross your fingers. That foot switch idea might be helpful to you. But as a beginner rig, I mean, this isn't like the e end all be all. I'm going to do the Sistine Chapel. This is just to be able, so I have a little airbrush rig here. And I don't necessarily want to go out uh, the way I do things and to, to you know, throw down a hundred dollars on a kit all at one time. I would never be able to do that. But piecing it together on the cheap, that's really how I like to do things. And it came together well for me. So I'm sure that there are some kits that have everything, including the uh, a nice Chinese dual action and a nice Chinese mini compressor that you could get on sale for 85 bucks somewhere. And I'm sure I could, you know, people could argue that I'm an idiot for doing that. So go ahead and thumbs down me in the comments. That's just not the way it worked out for me on my airbrush adventure. And I spent little bits of money over long periods of time. So uh, that's what I came to learn. You can try to pull it off and do it cheap, like I said, or look into a kit. If you can get something for 85 bucks or 100 bucks like that, you know, consider maybe that would be the smart way for you to do it. Maybe you want to piece things together like me. If you could get lucky and find the PVC in an alley and, you know, get the air pump for free, certainly isn't going to hurt you to reduce your costs. So in the meantime, uh, I'm going to be waiting on my real airbrush to come and then enjoying some time with that before I do the actual project, which is a replica of an Eric Clapton crash orchestra guitar that I'm doing. I have the Strat that's uh, got four coats, five coats of primer on it right now, and that's kind of why I'm playing around with airbrushes again, is because I'm doing that custom guitar for myself. As I received that guitar, uh, it was re-gifted to me. I rescued it out of a dumpster 15 years ago and gave it to a kid who never really played it much. Uh, it needed some work, and the guy that was like his dad wasn't really a handy guy or didn't really have so much time. Uh, he wasn't a musician so much, so he was a singer. He's a damn good singer. So uh, I, I guess I had told him, hey, if you if you don't play this guitar, you know, don't smash it or, you know, throw it away or burn it, Hendrix it or anything. Give it back to me. And he did. Fifteen years later, I get this Strat. And I fixed it all up. I, I built some circuits for it. I put a Strat Blaster in it. And I put a uh, a mid boost, a Demeter fat boost. I built I built that inside of it. And man, you should hear this thing. It's got some really kick ass pickups on it. With that active electronics, oh, 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 this guitar is just gonna it's gonna be a nice addition to the collection. It's gonna look really cool with the custom paint job, and that's where the airbrush comes in. Uh, it's you know so I can do my cheap acrylics and not have brush marks in it. So. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate all the support on my channel. Good luck if you're getting an airbrushing. I would twist your arm to get into it. It's really cool. And, you know, you, you can do it a lot cheaper than one would think, especially if you're crafty. So, peace.